The confirmed number of coronavirus cases in Los Angeles County comes to 230,662. The confirmed number of deaths reaches 5,537. Here in Torrance, the total number of confirmed cases is 1,239, with total confirmed deaths remaining at 62. Welcome to COVID-19 Today. I'm Christine Lee. It's 2 p.m. on Sunday, August 23rd. Two dozen major fires continue to burn across Northern California. President Donald Trump declared the wildfires burning through homes and devastating forestry in the state as a major disaster and is offering federal assistance. More than 14,000 firefighters continue to work to put out the fires, which has spread across nearly 1 million acres. Fires were sparked by more than 12,000 lightning strikes nearly two weeks ago and have been fueled by high winds and record-breaking warm weather. So far, at least six people have died and thousands have evacuated. Most of the destruction has been caused by three large fire complexes in mountainous and rural areas. CAL FIRE, referring to them collectively as the LNU Lightning Complex, includes the Sonoma Lake Napa unit north of San Francisco. California Governor Gavin Newsom requested assistance from outside the state to help battle the flames. Agencies from Oregon, New Mexico and Texas have begun sending firefighters, engines and aircraft to help battle the blaze. Torrance Fire Department's strike team also deployed members to assist in the fires. California state officials signed a major agreement with the federal government that aims to reshape how forests are managed for years to come. Under the plan, California agencies and the U.S. Forest Service will use brush clearing, logging, and prescribed fires to thin out 1 million acres a year by 2025, an area larger than Yosemite National Park every 12 months and roughly double the current rate of thinning. The Forest Service and the State Natural Resources Agency also committed to coming up with a 20-year plan by next year to identify which areas in the state should get priority for thinning projects with updates every five years. The goal is to treat at least 15 million acres or roughly 15 percent of all the land in California. It's part of a three-step strategy the state is working on. The first step to urge residents to clear defensible space around their homes. Second is to create thinned out areas known as shaded fuel breaks between wild areas and communities. And finally, finishing larger restoration projects to thin trees and brush back to more historic levels first with chainsaws then in several years with controlled burns. Now this does come with some resistance as roughly 40 percent of the 33 million acres of forest in California is owned by private landowners and 99 percent own less than 500 acres. President Trump signed a key piece of bipartisan legislation last month called the Great American Outdoors Act, which provides $9.5 billion over the next five years for upgrades at America's national parks, along with projects on other public lands like national forests, which could pay for some of the thinning costs. New coronavirus numbers in Los Angeles County continue to show promise as data reflects a steady decline in hospitalization and positivity rates. While officials say that may be a sign that the public is successfully beginning to slow the spread of the virus, many are concerned adults younger than 50 are still accounting for the majority of the new infections. This poses a serious concern as they may be unknowingly infecting parents, grandparents, and other older, vulnerable people around their community. The county reported 48 new deaths and 1,644 new cases on Saturday, with a third of those ranging between the ages of 30 and 49. L.A. County Department of Public Health Director Dr. Barbara Ferrer cautions that with the warm weather continuing throughout Southern California, it's important to remain mindful of all the precautions everyone must continue to take to decrease community transmission. She she reminds the public that being around people who are not part of your household puts you at greater risk for COVID-19, which is why people should stay home as much as possible and avoid all gatherings of any size with people who are not part of your household. Coronavirus cases top 5.6 million nationwide and 22.7 million globally. The COVID-19 death toll around the world passes 800,000, with U.S. fatalities accounting for 170,000. According to Johns Hopkins University, while the number of new cases is down from a peak in July, the country is still seeing over 360,000 new cases per week.
The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention is giving the public a promising timeline of when COVID-19 could potentially be under control. According to CDC Director Robert Redfield, in order to see real improvement, at least 90% of Americans must wear masks, social distance, and wash hands regularly. He says if everyone follows the suggested fundamentals, the outbreak could be under control in as little as four weeks or up to 12 weeks. Redfield also strongly urged parents to get their kids vaccinated for the flu as public health officials fear the seasonal flu could further complicate the coronavirus pandemic in the fall and burden the health care system. A new study was re recently released on COVID-19 serology testing, finding that antibody testing may not be enough to determine immunity or risk of reinfection. The Infectious Disease Society of America published an extensive article with concerns of the effectiveness of a coronavirus antibody test. It's been said since the beginning of the pandemic that an antibody test can tell whether you've had an undiagnosed COVID-19 case in the past and whether you may be immune to the illness. But recent studies have shown that antibodies diminish over time and might even disappear from the bloodstream entirely within three months. Researchers say COVID-19 immunity isn't completely lost when that happens as T cells retain a memory of the infection and can potentially help kill the pathogen if compromised again. The study says antibody tests can be used in epidemiological studies looking at herd immunities in communities. But if antibody tests cannot detect older infections, then those herd immunity studies might not paint an accurate picture of a city or country's COVID-19 immunity. Researchers say more studies are needed to truly understand the performance of serology tests, including studies with large numbers of well-characterized patients where the timing of symptom onset and the severity of illness are clearly defined. You can read the full study at idsociety.org. The U.S. House of Representatives returned early from their summer recess to discuss legislation that would provide emergency funding to the United States Postal Service. The Delivering for America Act aims to reverse the new Postmaster General's cost-cutting measures to the United States Postal Service, including overtime for employees and removal of mail sorting machines. It also provides $25 billion in emergency funding to ensure all election mail is delivered on time. After several hours of debate on a rare Saturday afternoon, the legislation passed 257 to 150, with 26 Republicans voting in favor of it. Now, the bill faces an uncertain future as it heads to the Republican-led Senate. The Trump administration threatened to veto the legislation if it reached his desk. He tweeted on Saturday calling the controversy over the Postal Service a hoax and encouraged Republican lawmakers to vote against it. Activists and demonstrators rallied around United States post offices nationwide, including one in Torrance. Protesters peacefully showed support for mail carriers locally at Walteria Post Office Branch. The rally was designed to push back against the Trump administration's USPS policy changes, which has been set to slow the delivery of prescription medicines as well as other items for seniors, veterans, and Americans who rely heavily on the U.S. mail service. The House Oversight Committee released new internal USPS documents showing Postal Service decline in first-class and priority mail, marketing and periodicals, along with delays since the beginning of July. Postmaster General Louis DeJoy denies claims of impending, impeding mail-in voting ahead of Election Day and says the changes were intended to save money and increase efficiency. He said in a Senate hearing on Friday that the Postal Service is in fact able to handle election mail. DeJoy will testify again on Monday before the House Oversight Committee. Luxury electric car automaker Tesla is hoping to make it safer for kids in cars when temperatures get as hot as they have lately. CEO Elon Musk is seeking approval from the Federal Communications Commission to market a sensor that could tell if a child has been left behind in a hot car. According to the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, in 2019, 52 children died of heat stroke due to being left in a hot car. And to prevent more incidents like that from happening again, the luxury car maker wants to use millimeter wave sensors at power levels that aren't allowed under current laws. Radar-based systems would provide depth perception and would be able to see through soft materials such as blankets that could be covering a child in a car seat. 
It would also be able to tell the difference between an object versus a child by detecting micro movements like breathing patterns and heart rates, neither of which can be captured by cameras or in seat sensors alone. The FCC will seek public comment on Tesla's waiver petition through September 21st before making a decision. Today marks what would have been Kobe Bryant's 42nd birthday, and tributes are set to honor the basketball legend. The Los Angeles Dodgers remembered Bryant and his daughter Gianna in a pre-game ceremony. They died in a helicopter crash seven months ago along with seven other victims. The Lakers also released an emotional tribute video and has plans to honor the basketball icon on Monday, which is 824, which are the two numbers that Kobe wore during his time in the NBA. A three-minute video released by the Lakers conveys how Bryant was not only one of the greatest players to ever play in the NBA, but also a devoted father to his daughters. Lakers plan to wear their special Black Mamba uniform in honor of Bryant at Game 4 of the playoffs. Nike announced they will pay tribute during Mamba Week, which runs from today through August 29th. In Torrance, you'll find several murals in Kobe's honor. Just a few among the nearly 331 Kobe murals counted around the world. KobeMural.com catalog murals in LA and around the world that are dedicated to Kobe. It shows 208 murals in Southern California alone, 267 in the United States, and 64 internationally. Brian's birthday also comes on the eve of Kobe Bryant Day, which was created in Los Angeles in 2016. Many also took to social media today wishing the legend a happy birthday. Nike tweeted, Kobe taught us to be better, a better scorer, better mentor, better father, better champion. Today, on his birthday, we continue his endless pursuit of better. The National Park Service marks its 104th birthday this week and visitors are being treated to free park entrances on August 25th in celebration. While the coronavirus pandemic has altered the operations of many national park sites, officials suggest calling ahead and checking conditions before heading out. The National Park Service recommends everyone wear face coverings while visiting the more than 400 sites established since 1916 when President Woodrow Wilson signed the legislation creating the National Park Service. Last year, they welcomed more than 300 million visitors. While parks did shut down in March due to the pandemic, they began reopening them in phases before the summer. Recently, Congress approved a bill to provide nearly $2 million a year for five years to fix roads, bridges, trails, campgrounds, visitor centers, wastewater, and water infrastructure. Now, if you miss this free entrance day, you still have September 26, which marks National Public Lands Day, and November 11th, Veterans Day, which are also celebrated with free entrance into the parks. The monthly Antique Street Fair is happening today. Created by Julie Randall and Miguel Salazar, the successful producers of the Dominguez Hills Antique Flea Market began offering a monthly event to show off the tree-lined streets and newly restored buildings in Old Torrance. The monthly event has been around since 1998 and has grown from 25 vendors to more than 200. Now, during the pandemic, visitors are asked to wear a mask and social distance. It is a pet-friendly event and is free and open to the public. You'll also find nearly two dozen restaurants in downtown Torrance offering outdoor seating. So swing by to shop and walk around and stay for a meal. The fair is located on Sartori Avenue between Post and Marcelina Avenue until 3 p.m. For more information, go to torrenceantiquefair.com. With the fall school year kicking off in Torrance in just a few days, we want to hear what your plans are to help your kids succeed in the age of COVID-19. We'd love to hear tips or suggestions that you might have that other families could find helpful. Torrance Unified School District is scheduled to begin the first day of distance learning on Wednesday, August 26th. Now, whether you have a preschooler or a teen in high school and every grade in between, we want to hear from you. And parents working from home, managing distance learning for your kids, and making personal and professional adjustments, share with us how you plan to make it work for your family as we're all in this together. Email us at COVID19today at torrentca.gov. Well, before we go, at the end of each program, we like to share stories from our community. Feel good pictures, images, and videos that remind us of how resilient our community is and how Torrance cares. 
Well, as we look ahead to September, the Torrance Theater Company hopes the community will continue to show their support as they shift gears and transition from free to fee-based performances online. Since the pandemic, the local theater group has offered a series of play-at-home performances to view online. It truly felt like a real live theater experience, but from the comfort of your home. Well, beginning September 6th, TTC will bring a new lineup of performances to the community with nine tentative shows scheduled. Now, what will be new this season is to participate. Each household must purchase a virtual ticket to the show. It's currently priced at $20 per household. All performances will be live and held on Sundays. And the best part is you can tune in from anywhere in the world. Viewers from the last performance commented on what a fantastic job the Torrance Theatre Company was doing. John Blake from Australia says, Bravo, fantastic cast, well done. And Bob Bomston wrote, Congrats to the entire Torrance Theatre Company for kickstarting and providing high quality theatre in a new and exciting way for patrons of the South Bay. Lovely storytelling earned four stars from where I was sitting. These are just two of the many thank you notes and emails the Torrance Theatre Company received in response to the virtual performances. Now be sure to stay in touch by following them on social media. What a great organization in Torrance dedicated to keeping the community engaged and entertained during this pandemic. Now if you have a great story to share, be sure to email us. We'd love to hear from you. That's our update for COVID-19 today. We hope you'll join us again tomorrow at 4 p.m. as Leslie Robbins brings you the latest update. Be safe, stay healthy, and thanks for tuning in. We'll see you next time. In the fight against COVID-19, contact tracing and free confidential testing are key to protecting yourself and the health of those around you. Why? Well, if you test positive, you'll have access to medical treatment regardless of your income or immigration status. Anyone you've been in close contact with can also access help. If you've been exposed to COVID-19, here's what you can expect. You'll receive a call from a public health worker who will help you understand your infection risk. You'll get connected to free local testing and medical treatment if needed, and will be asked to quarantine yourself to protect others around you. Your information is confidential and will not be shared. So is the information of any other person. Together, we can prevent the spread. Let's keep our communities healthy and on the path to reopening. Learn more about California Connected at covid19.ca.gov. Spending time outdoors has never felt more valuable. Whether it's exploring nature or relaxing in your yard, let's do it responsibly. Before going out, check for closures and fire restrictions. Practice social distancing, even when outside and on the trail. Back at home with burning yard debris, keep your pile small. And no matter where you are, be sure to properly extinguish any outdoor fire. Drown, stir, drown, feel. We're all in this together. Help keep our safe places safe.